you always see this um, illustration of the evolution of man. It starts with this little monkey. Yeah, yeah. ape. Yeah. Yeah, and it's becoming more erect until it becomes a human being. These creatures that are shown in the chain of evolution, they refer to some kind of fossils that were found at some point that have been dated to have existed at a certain period in time, millions of years ago, however far back. And somehow they were put in series so that they are theoretically depicting the evolution of man, right? Of human beings. Mm -hmm. My question is, number one, how do you explain these creatures? What are they? Are they related to each other in any way, or could they have been completely independent? Did they even exist or not? I, I, I'm just, I'm completely open with my question about this specific topic. And if they, if they did exist based on science and, and, and uh, archaeology and that kind of stuff, uh, is there something that actually ties each stage to the stage before it and the stage after it in a concrete manner that actually proves that this stage evolved into the following stage and the, and, and the following and so on? Does okay. That, do my, does my question make sense? Very. So, okay. so number one, when you look at the drawing itself, about our starting with an ape or monkey shape, and then you have the, the human being, uh, let's say that the drawing is not very accurate because this is not exactly how 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 the theory uh, thinks of this um, but how exactly it it works in terms of uh, the theory is not very clear even in the theory but let's say that there is a, a common ape ancestor okay and and this ape now there are mutations that generate this line of humanoid or hominin and and this line ends with um, somebody who looks like us, like the Homo erectus, for example, which was uh, claimed to be a species of uh, humanoid or human-like creatures that lived in Africa. And then Homo erectus spreads uh, in different places and more branching takes place here and there. Um, now, the first question is, so the theory will not tell you that the human beings were before Neanderthals and that the Neanderthals were before that hum Homo erectus and the Homo erectus was uh, an ape. No. Uh, they would say that uh, this kind of common ancestor between the apes and the Neanderthals branched into that ape and to Neanderthals and that this common ancestor between humans, Homo sapiens, which are us, and Neanderthals is this one that branched into Neanderthals from that side and to, into human beings from that side, okay? So it is like a family tree, okay? So you have a cousin who is called a Neanderthal, but he's your cousin. So the, he's not your father. The Neanderthal just died off? Okay, so now let's look at the Neanderthals, for example. So the Neanderthals are interesting because they they they're claimed to have been there until 50,000 years ago. 50,000 years is not so far away, okay? This is, you know, like order of magnitude of human history. We don't have written history before that, at that time, but it is a human history. It's not like millions of years ago, yeah? And you know, when you're talking about fossils, and, and, and evolution is talking about fossil records, um, they typically do not very much explain that their fossils are just bones because DNA has a short half-life I think it's 500 years so when you're talking millions of years this fossil is a million or five million years ago there's no DNA whatsoever in it you can only see its shape and when there is no DNA there's nothing there's just people who are judging on morphology and how th things look and sometimes you have a fossil which is a tooth a fossil, which is a jawbone, you, you, you might imagine that you have a fossil that's a complete creature. Sometimes it's really ridiculous, and they call it a fossil, okay? But the Neanderthals are recent. They are like 50,000 years ago. And when Neanderthals were discovered, it was a very big deal. 
because it was said those guys are not human they're not homo sapiens their DNA is different and they're not human however they look like humans they look so much like humans so it says that the common ancestors are getting better and they are branching into human-like species all the time and then humans come on stage but then what is human so you then expect that those Neanderthals are like those old movies where somebody is blah, 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 like this and you know his you know caveman kind of thing who doesn't think who is not intelligent etc but then amazing things happened and those amazing amazing things happened later so in the 90s it was hooray hooray we have the neanderthals human beings are homo sapiens are not the only human species that lived and we have evidence now it's different dna it's a it's not human but it's a human species it's not human like in terms of us but it's a human species but then guess what three interesting things happen number one what is a human so let me tell you if if I show you somebody who has hair on him and he's all not very tidy and you want to make a distinction if you're looking at a man who is looks as bad as an ape or you're actually looking at an ape what will be your immediate test intelligence and if you can't tell if he's very smart what is the first thing that you're going to do he's living in front of you maybe try talking to him okay if he talks then he's human but he, he's looking bad. Um, so speech is a very no, 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 uh, characteristic okay. human feature. Yeah. Yeah. If he's speaking, he, he's human. He has to be human if he's speaking. <laughs> exactly. So we don't find you know that much speaking things around us except humans. They have their communication, but it's nothing like human language. So language, yeah. But what if this guy who's all hairy sits down and starts writing you a letter? What if he looks at you for two hours and then you see that he has drawn you in a piece of paper? It's not a very tidy drawing, but he has drawn you. Will you have doubt that he is human? If he's speaking and he's writing and if he's drawing. So humans are talking, humans have art, and humans have culture. <coughs> And a very important part of this culture is religion. How would you know that a creature that lived 50,000 years ago was religious? Where do we find humans that lived 10,000 years ago? We found them buried in the ground. Where do we find fossils of, I don't know, tigers or saber tooths that lived hundreds of thousands or millions of years ago we find them also in the ground but we find the saber tooth thrown somewhere and we find the pharaoh buried somewhere right humans bury their dead it's a characteristic human feature and it is related to religion it's ritual it's related to religion or even if you'd like to call it superstition if you're an evolutionist it's culture so after this parade and festival about the neanderthal more neanderthal sites were discovered drawings on caves drawn by neanderthals were discovered it was found that neanderthals bury their dead and that the burial ceremony had rituals it was found that Neanderthals had tools, including weapons, pottery, paint, where they painted their things. It was also found that Neanderthals, the funny one, traded with humans. Traded with humans. So products of Neanderthals and products of humans were exchanged. And then 
to the disappointment of our fellow evolutionists, it was found that 2 to 4 percent of the modern human DNA is Neanderthal DNA. Interbred. So now the question is, you have this thing that somebody is calling Neanderthal. But it's actually... Well, this thing is talking, drawing, has culture, has religion, buries his dead, makes tools, makes weapons, trades with you. And at a point of time, human beings were given their daughters to Neanderthal, so the other way around. So it's just a, a, not a very good looking human being. <laughs> it is just a human being. So I would ask, let's say that for some reason... Asians or Africans or Caucasians go extinct and 50,000 years from now somebody finds a Caucasian or an African. Look at this thing. Homo Africanus. Look how strongly built he is. Look how tall he is. Look how his skull looks different. This is definitely a different type of human being that lived. Well, that makes sense. So, now there is a move in the scientific community that Neanderthals are just human beings. And evidence about other human beings, like there is this uh, shorter kind of uh, human beings that are called Homo florensis, and they are uh, lived on a specific island uh, in Asia. Um, the island's name is, is, is Florence something... Uh, Flores Island, I don't remember the name. So the the home of Florences. And 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 those guys were shorter and they had smaller skulls and so human species. They just like to do this. Here's another species, it's Homo Florences. And Homo Florences was, you know, it was this small group of maybe Homo erectus that left and then they had their own line of development or line of evolution or whatever else explanation. And then this island is isolated, and then evidence comes up that those guys reached the island in boats. Boats. And they had very similar features to Neanderthals. So Neanderthals suddenly disappeared 50,000 years ago. They, they are said to have, they have find different fossils, so there is fossils at 50,000, at, at more than 50,000, but almost 50,000 years ago, pst, no more Neanderthals. So previously they were saying, okay, and human beings, there's this another species now, and human beings killed them. Are you, are you killing your son-in-law and your, you know? It's just that the smaller community, my experience, smaller community of Neanderthals dissolved into the bigger community of human beings. And you find that the places where the Neanderthals were living, which is essentially Europe and Asia, is the places where the hum- modern human beings have the 2 to 4 percent DNA. And 2 to 4 percent is a very, very big percentage because the rest of the DNA just makes us human. So, you know, if, uh, it's just humans. So the claim that those guys are just d- different evolutions of different common ancestors into different species is not supported by the evidence. But you look into the media, you look into science explainers, you look into pop culture, and you find the drawing, and you find the claim that just like there are apes that became bonobos and became gorillas and became chimpanzees, there are common ancestors of apes that became Homo erectus and became Homo heidelbergensis and Homo and Neanderthalis, and Homo florensis, and Homo sapiens, which is not what the evidence says. But then they still grab, and they still grip, and they still say, okay, but okay, because a Homo erectus, for example, is older, so you will not find DNA. But I bet you, if we find DNA that is good enough, and you make the analysis, it will not be as different as the results coming on the Neanderthals. But you have a theory that's entrenched in mythology that is very adamant about its idea of of things evolving, uh, creatures evolving from branching trees and this kind of stuff, against the evidence. And then they completely neglect 
or give ridiculous explanations for the fact that human beings have 46 chromosomes and apes have 48 chromosomes. And guess what? When the, you look into the DNA of Neanderthals, it's 46 chromosomes too. And why on earth only 46 chromosome apes turn to be human? There is, there is no specific advantage for the, this or that one. It, it's, 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 not, it's not a reason for having good intellect or having good speech or having culture or writing or religion to have 46 chromosomes. Nothing, nothing in science says this. It just says one thing, that humans are a discontinuity in the line of creation. Just like God created the first life. And in some way, uh, so, some specific way, he created all the other sorts of life. And there is lack of research here to prove or not prove that this one mechanism, or is it separate creations? Is it, you know, different origins and then they developed? Is it multicellular life alone and uh, uh, single cell life alone? Is it? We don't know. The research is not money is not put in there to know we can just guess and our guess will be as good as anybody else but there is clear indications that there is a separate creation for human beings and guess what there is a separate creation for each one of us each one of us gets his own individual soul when he is conceived and we observe and we examine this soul it leaves us and then we are marked as dead so where does that leave evolution? It leaves evolution in a place where you insist on a naturalistic worldview, you force explanations of everything, you get more advanced so you find that the evidence is completely against you, and you invent names where you have to put the word evolution and you invent new words to, self, to positively self-reinforce. And to call anything else mythology and supernaturalism and superstition. This is essentially what is happening. What is its effect? That human beings are being sold the idea that they are great apes, they are animals. And it is giving them an ethical exit to live as animals. To have survival of the fittest and to have dominance of whoever is better. And to create a world where ideas uh, uh, related to uh, making your idol an animal this thing is not ethical for humans how come animals are doing it and this is what's happening today uh, people for example um, supporting for example uh, homosexuality because uh, there are evidence for homosexuality. They say there isn't, but there is evidence for homosexuality in animals. So the question is, even if, since when, since when uh, are animals our idols? Since when do we follow suit after animals? Well, if your worldview is that you're an animal, you're a great ape, so if you find a specific behavior in apes, then why not you? Civilization, where maybe we should redefine what civilization is. And will it is accepting evolution, meaning that you do not accept God? Well, the way they have defined it and the way it has extended beyond its original scope back to abiogenesis and back to cosmology and you have a general idea of evolution of everything from the Big Bang until the human being. And even before the Big Bang, they will not accept God. Essentially, the whole concept has become mapped one-to-one -one with the idea of philosophical naturalism to the extent that if you accept it, you have to accept it, all of it, and you have to acknowledge the same epistemology which takes everything out of your psyche except what science will tell you. And what science cannot approve and even cannot falsify, you cannot believe. Such as the existence of God. Such as the existence of God or the existence of angels, or the existence of your own soul. <laughs> because they know that if you acknowledge your own soul, where does it come from? It's not explained by materialistic processes. It must come from outside, and there is nothing outside. If you, if you acknowledge your own soul, you open the door to acknowledging a lot of other things. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so this is the thing. You accept philosophical naturalism that is masqueraded and disguised in evolution, 
you deny God, you deny yourself. You're suddenly a machine. You're not as you're not any better than your own computer or your mobile phone. You're an evolved mobile phone. And the next thing is <coughs> transhumanism and uploading your consciousness to the internet and becoming <coughs> a cybernetic organism. The next phase of human evolution. Complete nonsense. Any computer scientist knows this nonsense. But even computer scientists now are propagating that it's going to be possible and a singularity will happen. A singularity will happen in the cyberspace. Like a singularity happened to create life and a singularity happened to create consciousness. Now a singularity will happen in the silicon world and you will have conscious computers and we will connect to them and we will become one big internet of consciousness. And we're not uh, any, any better than our own machines at a point of time. Maybe even they will become better and they will rule us. And you have all the movies talking about this. AI, AI ruling and, and getting rid of human beings because survival of the fittest. Yeah. 